I made a video a while back talking about the poetics of walking and how I should make uh, get a book together or something like that about this thing, the poetics of walking. And I'm doing more, some more thinking about it and I might actually have a go at that. I don't know if it'll be a book or whether it'll just be a series of videos or conversations or whatever. But uh, yeah, so I just want to spend a couple of minutes thinking about what I mean by that. Uh, I mean, when I talk about the poetics of walking, I'm talking about it the same way that people like uh, Gaston Bachelard talk about poetics of space or poetics of reverie, which I've mentioned before. But I would want to up the uh, the kind of cognitive poetics, cognitive science, cognitive linguistics end of it. When Bachelard and his mates are doing it, they are very much coming from a... Well, I guess they're coming from a kind of psychoanalytic perspective, ultimately. But... Uh, you know, I would want to use all of the findings that's happened in linguistics and in phenomenology and in neuroscience over the past 15 years to kind of support that empirically, if you like, really. They touch down on neuroscience and how cognition and language and neuroscience work together to produce meanings, allow us to produce meanings and allow us to do things like use poetic strategies mobilising metaphors and metonymy and synecdoche and, idi and uh, irony and all these uh, linguistic effects in order to be able to make sense of the world. That, that's the slant I would come into it at. And the way you do that, or at least the way I would choose to do that, is, uh, is I would basically be looking for examples in the world of the way that certain concepts are used about walking. Because that's, that's kind of how you do these kind of analyses. You you have to kind of adopt a bit of a kind of Martian mindset and pretend that you don't really know what these words mean in order to see how they're being used. Because it's the use of these words and the use of the concepts they refer to that's important, not what you think about them before you go in. How are people using this? So it's a bit like um, like if you were a Martian or an alien and you didn't know anything about human culture and you came down to a field and the first thing you found was a toolbox, you know, a toolbox. You would open the toolbox and you'd pull out a spanner, let's say, but you'd have absolutely no idea what a spanner was. The handle wouldn't make any sense because you haven't got any hands. The bit at the end that goes over the bolt wouldn't make any sense because, of course, your technology doesn't have bolts in it, so you wouldn't know what the hell this thing was. The only way you'd be able to find out is by seeing how this spanner is being used by the population at large. So you'd observe people using it, and sure, yeah, sometimes they would get hold of it with these little fleshy appendages and apply leverage to turn these bolts, turn the nuts off these bolts to dismantle things or assemble things. But sometimes they'd be using it as a kind of impromptu hammer, if anything like me at least, you know, turning it sideways and bashing a nail in with it. Or sometimes they'd be turning it around the other way and levering off the top of a tin of paint with the handle bit of it. Or, um, I don't know, just using it as a... Uh, I can't think of any other uses. Maybe throwing it, you know, as a, as a way of expending energy or as a way of getting their frustrations out. Or maybe using it as a weapon in that film, what's it called? Hell Drivers. It's no black and white film about truck drivers. There's a scene where this guy is trying to threaten this other bloke, a driver. He opens the, the, the cabin door of his van to assault him, and the driver, who's a good guy, has got this massive spanner in his hand. He's just started holding it like this, you know clearly a threat. You know. So it's a, there's a potential for using this spanner as a weapon. Or, or, um, or as a kind of signifier of manliness, you know. When I was a teenager I used to read motorbike magazines and there's one called Bike, B-I-K-E. And the cartoon in the back pages of Bike was a character called Ogri, who was a, a motorcyclist, you know, a greasy biker. Very manly, good guy, you know. But uh, he always used to carry a spanner in his back pocket this cartoon character and that was a kind of signifier of a certain kind of manliness which I've certainly adopted I still carry a metaphorical spanner in my back pocket which I metaphorically pull out on occasions to signify how manly I am pretty much like I'm doing now by using it as an example uh, okay so yeah so anyway that's that's kind of how you do a certain kind of analysis you see how it's used in the in the in the, in the you see how a concept is used as if you're a Martian. I'll do the same thing with words and concepts, particularly to do with walking. I would look to see how a particular word, and the word I'm thinking of right now, which I'll do a separate video, is this word tramp. I like the word tramp. Tramp to do with walking. So you would say, you would say to yourself, okay, I'm an alien, I've come down to this 
weird planet. I've opened up this box, it's found in the middle of a field, and there's this thing called a tramp lying in it. Actually, it sounds like a dead tramp, it? but this concept in there called tramp. How, is, how are people using this? And by doing that kind of an analysis, it'll tell me more about that concept. And once I've got that, then I would probably move on to a different concept to do with walking in this particular case. And that's broadly speaking how um, people like Bachelard do it. Uh, except, of course, they don't use tramp and they don't use cognitive poetics and cognitive neuroscience to talk about it. They use something else. But in uh, Poetics of Space, he talks about roundness, the concept of roundness and how roundness is mobilised. Now, yeah, sometimes people use it to describe round things, just in the way that sometimes people use spanners to take nuts off bolts. But sometimes they use roundness in different ways. And by seeing how people use it, you can find out what use it serves in the population and in, in, in cognition and in thought and in imagination. So yeah, uh, that's what I think about doing. Poetics of walking. And I'm going to go down here, I'm going to walk across this bit of a field here, through that stile where that woman is, across there, onto the path that lies beyond here. And then I'll start talking about tramp, I think. I'll give it a go, I'll see how far I get. Thank you for listening.